We can learn a lot about diseases based on how they spread through a population, and also learn how to keep that population protected as well. That's the subject of this last video of this module. Epidemiology is the study of how diseases and other negative outcomes move through a population. The goal of epidemiologists is to stop or slow the spread of disease or events, or to learn from past diseases how to limit the impact of future pathogens. If you recall, in Module 1, we were talking about the different foundations for making judgments or moral decisions, and that there are competing interests of self-interest or egoism, utilitarianism, which is the greatest good for the greatest number, or also protection for the most at risk, which is altruism or virtue. And these can come into conflict, and especially when trying to deal with regulations or procedures related to epidemiology. Some people are most concerned with their self-interest. Some people are trying to get the greatest good for the greatest number. But that, unfortunately, is going to leave some minorities unprotected. And others are saying protection of the most sensitive and the most at risk is the greatest good. As a society, a well-communicated unified approach is essential for dealing with an epidemic. When we look at the tools of epidemiology, they try to identify sources of the pathogens, tracking exposure and contact tracing is also essential and building societal immunity through vaccination programs when possible. Some of the challenges and difficulties of epidemiology is that risks to individuals in a population is not uniform. As we saw with COVID-19, those who were oldest were some of the most impacted and individuals with lower socioeconomic status can have negative impacts. Disproportionately higher than those who are at a higher socioeconomic status due to differential access to medical services and treatments. It's also very possible for individuals to be immunocompromised for a variety of reasons. And so this concept of public health becomes an important thing to talk about, both from the medical perspective and from the ethical perspective as well. Things such as the importance of nutrition, the importance of preventative care, and welfare checks, the importance of early diagnosis, these are all things which increase in individuals' likelihood of receiving proper, proper medical care and being overall healthy. And yet, this is something that is unevenly distributed within society. And so many programs are around to try to help improve access to nutritious food, whether it's the public school lunch system or food banks. There are many programs out there to try to increase or incentivize attending welfare checks and, and preventative healthcare visits to medical professionals because that early diagnosis can lead to much better outcomes than late diagnosis. When we talk about public health concerns that epidemiologists and public health experts care about, so knowing sources of pathogens and toxins. Another concern of public health are reproduction issues.
from contraceptions to maternal nutrition, prenatal health care programs, these are things that impact the public on a broad level. Nutrition, food lunch programs, the FDA recommendations that we saw on those food labels, uh, food labels themselves, these are all elements of public health to try to increase knowledge and also increase outcomes of our society. Epidemics aren't only related to pathogens. There's also epidemiology of violence. Epidemiology can be used to track health concerns not related to diseases. Violence is something that can be tracked in a social community. To look for additional correlations and trends, stresses, experiences, and chemicals may all play a role in looking at societal level violence. Another aspect of public health and epidemiology is if there needs to be a product recall. It might be food items which are contaminated. Or products which are shown to be defective or dangerous. This is also why certain products are discontinued. Obesity can be considered an epidemic. Obesity is recognized as an increased mass in relation to height. And there are several health concerns which are related to obesity. There's a goal of increasing both exercise and smart food choices within the populace. Another epidemic is the myopia epidemic. Myopia is nearsightedness. Some blame screens, but studies have found that regularly being outdoors has more of an impact than screen usage. And in this case, being outdoors is a positive. Those who are able to be outdoors more often are less likely to need corrective lenses or to have myopia than those who spend majority of their time, especially during their childhood years, indoors. So it's not that screens are to blame, but it's being indoors for excessive periods of time that make it more likely for an individual to become nearsighted increasing the amount of time that kids are outdoors during development decreases the likelihood that they will develop myopia. So as we can see with epidemiology and public health, there are many concerns, there are many things that we're interested in, and epidemiologists and individuals who study public health are able to provide guidance to us as a society in ways that we can protect those who are most at risk. Now, it may come at the expense of some self-interest, or it may require some acknowledgement that egoism isn't necessarily always the best course of action when making decisions for a society. But it's important to also realize that we cannot give up all of our freedoms and have everyone receive their best outcomes. There really needs to be a balance between self-interest and utilitarianism and protection of the most vulnerable. In our next module, we're going to learn specifically about viruses.